Hello, my name is Asha Collins, and I'm here to talk to you today about business development. This is part of a larger learning series on business concepts for life scientists. My name is Asha Collins. I'm a vice president of U.S. Clinical Trial Sourcing at McKesson. I have a PhD in cancer biology and microbiology from the University of Wisconsin at Madison. And today, I'm going to talk to you about business development for a scientist. At the end of this talk, you will learn five different things around business development, or as we call it, BD. The first piece is you'll actually be able to understand exactly what this is. So we're going to define business development for you. We're also going to talk you through the different steps of the entire BD process. You're going to understand through that how BD can help actually drive the visions and goals for your organization, for your business, or for your initiatives. We're also going to talk to you about the different vehicles that you can put in place to have a successful BD strategy and to achieve those goals. And last, we're also going to talk to you about how you actually put together a successful deal structure. So what is business development? Business development really helps drive growth and expansion for an organization, a product, and even a specific brand. The purpose is to help identify and execute on any type of opportunity that can drive revenue, profit, or even just overall growth for, again, a business or an initiative. BD is a really critical component of any business strategy. When we're looking at business development, it comes in very different flavors depending on where exactly it sits. For scientists, business development in a biotechnology company can look very different than a business development strategy in academia. In biotechnology, business development is really focused on how a company fills its pipeline, how it commercializes or bring market products to market, and also how it serves its stakeholders. When you're looking at BD in academia, it's really focused on the lab, how the lab builds its project pipeline, and how that lab can also execute successfully on opportunities to publish, as well as to fund the lab and the overall growth of the lab and the lab initiatives. This is an overview of the entire BD process. And I'll walk you through these four different steps over the next several slides. The first step is identify the gap. To make sure that you have a successful business strategy, you need to know what you're solving for from the very beginning. And that's what this step does. Number two, determine the vehicle that you're going to use to fill this gap. You know what the gap is. How are you going to actually fill the gap? There are a number of vehicles that you can use, and we'll discuss those. Once you determine the gap, once you determine the vehicle, then it's all about execution. And the step number three is all about you executing the deal. And four, You've done the work to understand what your gap is. You know what vehicle you're using. You're executing on it. Are you succeeding? So number four teaches us how to go through making sure that you're measuring your success so that you can then go back and look at what additional gaps or what remaining gaps you have for the second version of your BD strategy. So let's talk about this first step, identifying the gap. When we think about this part of the process, there are a couple of questions to first ask yourself. You're saying, how can I actually identify the gap? Well, what kind of gaps are we talking about? What do these gaps look like? Those are really good questions. And what we're going to do next is really talk about the types of gaps that there are and how you can actually go about identifying these different types of gaps. So one, just note that gaps can be multivarious. They can be extremely diverse. So they can be financial. You have a business. You know how much money you need to make or how much you're projecting to make. But maybe you're having a shortfall. And so that's what a gap could be when we talk about financial. It could be a shortfall of revenue. It could be a shortfall of profit. It could also be a shortfall to access to capital. So for example, perhaps you need some additional real estate. Perhaps you need additional equipment. And you don't have the ability to get there. These are all called financial gaps. There could also be market gaps. You have an amazing product, but maybe the market hasn't really understood that yet. So perhaps you have a market share gap. You're not getting as much penetration as you want out of the marketplace. Maybe you have a geographic footprint misalignment. You think that your product should be huge in North America, but it's really only huge in China and maybe Europe. That would be a geographic footprint gap. And then the last piece is access to markets. Maybe you're looking really for physicians that have a huge uptake of your market, 
of your product, and that's not happening. Access to markets, whether either stakeholder or perhaps even actually geographic, are also types of gaps that you can identify. And the last is stakeholders. So we are looking for people to adopt your product and you want to make sure that all the key stakeholders have them. This is where you look at either product adoption or expertise gaps. So these are really the three types of main gaps we think about when we're looking to create a business development strategy and we're looking to understand exactly what you're trying to solve for. These are examples of different gaps. So make it really crystal clear what we're talking about when we go through these different ones. So a few years back, Levac actually lost his patent, and as a result, Novartis was falling quite short in his cancer drug sales. And as a result, they had to really push hard to look for new drugs to fill this revenue gap. And this was reported across the board, but this particular Wall Street Journal article really talks about it quite clearly. Another piece that we're seeing a lot of companies go through, too, is also a pipeline gap. And we'll actually show another detailed example of this as well. So a pipeline gap means that you have a number of products, but perhaps when you look across from either sort of preclinical all the way to phase four and launch, maybe you don't have your products actually evenly or optimally um, placed across that pipeline. And so this is what we call a pipeline gap. And this is something that Eli Lilly was in their investors were dealing with recently as well. Here's an example of a stakeholder adoption gap. And so here we see is that Novartis was really, they had a heart failure pill, and they were looking for doctors to really uptake this pill. And what they were seeing was that they weren't getting their doctors really to prescribe Entresto. This is a key, a really clear example of a stakeholder adoption gap. This last piece is a market penetration gap example. And so here, J&J was looking specifically at a global market strategy and falling rather short in terms of its penetration. All together, so the revenue, pipeline, stakeholder, market penetration gaps are real issues that biotechnology and biopharma companies deal with day to day. And BD is a key success factor in helping them address those and get over these gaps. So now let's discuss how gaps are actually identified. And when we think about gaps and the identification of them, we really think about them in two different ways. We think about the current business model gaps as well as the future business model gaps. And when we're thinking about the current business model gaps, what we really want to understand are, what we really want to understand is, how are you doing today versus how you thought you might be doing today? And so what you would like to do is sort of take an analysis and what we call a gap analysis. You can find a lot more information about this on you, with YouTube videos as well. And what you do is you map out where exactly you are today across any number of factors, whether it's the marketplace, stakeholder adoption, finances, et cetera. This red pin actually shows where you are today. And then you assess, well, where do we actually think that we want it to be? And that difference is your actual gap. And you can take that, and then that will sort of be the driver for how you determine how you move forward with a BD strategy. You also want to think about your future growth gaps. So where will your product be, where will your business be in the future, and where will that market be in relationship to that? And so that's why for the future growth gaps, we really need our deep assessments around the marketplace. You can think about it in four different ways. You can look at market penetration. So jump forward in your brain, think about three years, maybe even 12 years or five years, and where the market is going to be and how your initiative might actually be in relationship to that marketplace. Is, are your product going to be more, have greater penetration or less, and why might that be? The other part is sort of product development. What phase is your product in today and how might that change in the future? What will that look like and what are some potential gaps in the development of your product? The last piece is, or one of the last pieces, is market development. Are you moving into a new market? Are you moving into a very established market? Think about your goals in relationship to the market and where it will be in the future. And the last piece is diversification. Do you have multiple different product types? Do you have multiple different sub-segments of a business? How are you diversifying your different revenue streams or your different goals or your different strategies actually to get to your goal? And how might that diversification change into the future? Having a good assessment of all these four themes will really help you understand what potential gaps you will have in the future. 
And these will give you the tools to help you identify the gaps in the future and the previous ones from the current business model as well. This is a really good example of how companies actually look at their pipeline to understand what gaps they have in their pipeline. Very commonly, you take a look at all the products that you have in your portfolio, and you map them against the entire life cycle. So are they preclinical, or have they actually already launched? Any gaps in any part of these phases introduces a strategy or an opportunity to actually identify a place where you can put a BD strategy around. And as you can see in this example, there's a clear gap in the clinical and approval space that this company has with their portfolio. This is another example of how companies look at commercial gaps or market gaps. And so here you can see that they have some active users across the board. They're looking basically at the different demographics, the different stakeholders that have taken up the product, where the product is taken up. So again, are their stakeholders adopting it correctly or is it a gap? Uh, is the product where it's expected to be geographically or is there a gap? And also, this last piece, too, is average adherence. So this is that adoption piece. Are people actually taking up this product as we exactly, as the company expected the product to be taken up? And so that's how the different ways that you actually can look across your business, your product, your initiative to see, are we having a commercial gap? And then drill down to figure out what exactly type of gap are we having? To learn more about this, you can also understand how you identify gaps by using other types of things. There's a lot more that you can do. Here are a few of those things. You can look at more metrics that really understand what exactly are we looking to achieve. So maybe it's 50% market share, but what does that mean for each demographic, for each stakeholder, for each type of product, at what timeline are we looking to achieve those? So those would be understanding more metrics and having really, really clear success indicators. The other piece would be doing a lot more analysis around not just revenue and profit, but maybe even operational expenses, or maybe even other types of revenue and profit too, getting, again, a lot more specific about those things. You could also look at market assessment that we talked about, but one thing I didn't talk about was actually competitor analysis. And that will be really, really key to understanding the market as well too. Not just what you're expecting, but also how do you think other companies and other competitors are going to act in the market in the future? Because that's also going to impact any future gaps that you might also have. The last two things are really going deeper again into the stakeholder behavior analysis. So you'll have for each product or initiative or company or lab, you have a different stakeholder group that you're actually targeting. Different target groups or different stakeholder groups need different things. And there might be gaps that are very unique to those different stakeholders. So you'll want to drill down to understand those a lot better so that you can address them specifically in a focused manner. And the last thing is root cause analysis. And this is a process that you can probably look on YouTube and learn a lot more about. What it really helps you do is understand not what the symptoms of the problem are, but make sure when you're identifying an issue, it is actually the root cause or the actual reason, the actual cause, and not just a corollary to the issue or the gap that you're seeing. All of these pieces can really be drawn really closely to academia. You can draw very strong parallels to academia, and Anatole's video can really help you understand that more, where he really goes through the questions of how an academic lab utilizes BD, as well as how these gaps are actually identified and filled using a much more lab-centric lens.